Hello, in this quick tutorial we're going to look at why seam lines matter and well what seam lines are anyway. Uh, in this case um, I'm actually using Jurycad Dream version 13. If you're on an earlier version, okay, Jurycad Dream 15 or 14, then you may quite frequently run into issues with your inlay. Okay, In this version there's been uh, quite a lot of improvements and the same issues don't really occur anymore so it's quite um, nice to have that fixed but I'll make this video anyway because it is good to be aware of this kind of thing. Okay so if I were to be in JCD 2015 and I want to say inlay this, these curves uh, to make a channel, okay I just inlay, pick the face, pick the curves, okay in 2015 15 this would have failed okay in this version it works because they've made the improvements but the reason the inlay would have failed in the previous version okay maybe you're experiencing it yourself uh, the reason it fails is because the inlay is over a seam line okay and seam lines for the most part are invisible but in a sense um, every edge every curve has a start and end point okay if we have just a two-point line then the start and end points are obvious, it's at either end. But if we have a loop, something that is closed, then the start and end point is not so obvious because the start and the end point are the same point. Okay, It is a closed loop. To find the uh, end point, we can use our um, curve direction uh, tool, curve direction, and place it on an edge. Okay, We see that our seam line, our start and end point of this edge, is at the top here, okay, at the 12 o'clock. Okay, I think in um, 2015, this curve direction doesn't work on edges. You may have to place a curve on the edge and then use the curve direction on that curve, but the seam line will be the same location. Okay, so our seam line, our starting end point, sorry, of the edge is at the 12 o'clock, okay? And what this means is that when, when we form our shape, which is our shank, which is being created with, well, an ex well, it's actually with this, um, with a pre-made shank, but when the shank is created, um, it creates a seam line, okay, running across this surface, it's invisible, but there's a seam line there that um, starts at the start and end point of our curve, okay. So the start and end point of our curve or edge dictates the seam line across the surface. Okay, and the inlay in previous versions had trouble um, performing across seam lines. Okay, and in fact, even if we do the inlay, we do see um, this sort of consequence of having a seam line here is a split edge. Okay, so there are some leftover consequences here you can see that we have this extra edge. You know, typically we would want to have a complete single edge here, but since this inlay is performed over an, uh, a seam line, okay, we have an extra edge in here. That's just the way it is. Okay, so the way to resolve this, well, let me talk first of all to those on an older version of Jurycad Dream. Uh, if the inlay is failing over a seam line, then you can uh, do two things, either you move the seam line or you use my alternative strategy which I prefer over the inlay anyway and that is to split your face with curves with the curves and then do a face offset. Okay, The only reason I would use an inlay over this method is when I want to have a draft. Okay, The inlay can allow you to perform a draft. Okay, So this method uh, splitting the surface, doing a face offset, I find to be far more reliable than the inlay. Uh, in the current version, version 13, you know, the inlay has uh, had some major improvements, so it's actually not that bad anymore. But I, I still tend to use this method anyway. Okay, so that's one way you, um, you use this alternative method. The, um, the other way that I suggested was to move the seam line and in this case, well, it would require some history. Uh, well, I'd have to come back into this uh, pre-made shank and change it in there. 
Let's see if we can do that. Okay, we have a pre-med shank, it's a component. This means it has its own history. Right click, edit part. Okay, I'll see the history. It's a very basic shank. So the loft of a ring shank. Okay, so I need to bring back my template layer. It was hidden. And let's unblank. I feel like there must be some sketches blanked out at the moment. Okay. So we're doing a loft. Okay, so the seam line originates from this loft. Okay, and the seam line is based or occurs at the um, based on the start and end point of our driving curve. Okay, so you can see the start and end point of this driving curve is at the top here at the 12 o'clock and this makes sense to us now because that is where our seam line is in our um, shank. Okay, if we come in with the curve direction we see that our start and end points are the edges and our subsequent seam, seam line is at the 12 o'clock and this is where our driving curve had its start and end point. So it's very simple to change the seam line location. We just change the location of the uh, driving curve start and end point. Okay, and actually, uh, there'll be two ways we can really do this. Uh, the first way, okay, well, in fact, three ways if we're doing it based on this template. Uh, we actually have an um, alternative curve that we can pick. Okay, we can pick this curve and it has a start point down here. Okay, so this will very quickly change our start and end point and seam line to here. Okay, if we're working not on this template, we could, and say we just had that one curve to work with, then all we do is rotate this curve. Okay, we can just move, rotate the curve, and that will move the start point to wherever we rotate it to. Of course, this will only work with spherical, well, circular curves. If we didn't have a circular curve, there's another way we can change the start and end point. Okay, and that way is, let me just blank out the sketch. And what do we have here? Curve. Well, we have a curve list. Um, let me just redraw. I'll hide this template and I'll draw a circle to demonstrate, or an, well, a circle to demonstrate this. A line plane. Uh, actually, we'll just use the three point method, it's far quicker. Picking any of these datum planes. Okay, let's see where our start and end point is. Okay, it's at the um, three o'clock, which should be fine for uh, what we're after here, but let's pretend that our seam line, sorry, our start end point is at the 12 o'clock. How do we move it without rotating or picking a different curve or creating a different curve? Well, what we do is we trim it, just do a split trim at point, at just one point. Pick the curve, pick the point, let's say we pick here. That's all we do, confirm. And we're not gonna see any change in this curve. It's gonna appear exactly the same, but if we come in and do a curve direction, we'll see we have changed the start and end point down here, and that will change our subsequent seam line and uh, long story short, after you've done all of that, let me just repick the curve. Okay, so now we have the seam line down here. We exit back into our original build. Okay, tweak, I'll actually have to get rid of that tweak, otherwise it will change the seam line. Okay, I'm going to replay all of these and oh, let me have to redefine. Let's just make sure our curve direction is okay. Yep. I'm just going to repick this face actually, so that's a bit of a pain. And I assume it's these edges. Sketch, extrude, wire. Okay, the second shape. 
Oh, that should have been the. F Here we go. And we'll pick this face. Let me just redo these trims. It's not really going so smoothly now. Okay, but the point I wanted to make was that um, when I have these um, seam lines changed, then I'd perform my face offset. Okay, if you remember, we had the extra edge. This edge was split, but now we have um, a single edge in here. Okay, and that's why the seam lines matter. So if we do do this inlay or um, face offset across a seam line, we're going to have that extra edge, uh, or I guess a split of the edge where that seam line lies. So typically you want to be aware of where your seam line is so that you can move it out of the way if need be.